Hello and welcome back to the run-up. The Nigerian judiciary has gone through various forms of controversies in recent times as a result of some of its judgment that people felt were short of expectations, especially at the Supreme Court level. Well, the question today, as all eyes have turned to the judiciary, is how much faith do Nigerians have in the judiciary? Today on the show, we are discussing post-electoral litigation and vital impartial role of the judiciary. Joining us to discuss this, I have Barrister Justice Uhuebu, human rights lawyer and former vice presidential candidate of the NAC party in 2019. Hello, Barrister Uhuebu. Um, good afternoon. It's almost afternoon. It's my pleasure. All right. It's still morning in Lagos where we are. Barrister <laughs> Ayo Ademiluyi is a legal practitioner and is also joining us. He's in the studio with me. It's a pleasure. Hello. Good afternoon, Nigeria. All right, we know that uh, discussing uh, any case that's in court is sub judice, and um, so we'll not discuss the cases. But I want us to take a look at uh, the petitions that have been filed just in passing, because mm. as I tell you, I have seen a broken English version mm. of one of the petitions. That tells you, yes, that tells you how interested. Nigerians are in mm. this, and indeed, not just Nigerians, mm. but the international community, because this battle mm. has moved to the courts. So, help us understand uh, the matter and prayers by the petitioners, Peter Obi and then Abubakar Tiku. Let's start with that of Peter Obi. You help us with that of Peter Obi, and then uh, Uhebu, Barrister Uhebu will help us understand the prayers of Atiku Abubakar. Uh, uh it's a player of the year once again. I have uh, had the benefit of um, reading through the lengthy petition of um, Mr. Peter Obi to the Presidential Election Petitions uh, Tribunal. Um, the major ingredient in that petition is that one, uh, the person of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, is not qualified to even run for the office of the president on the basis of some um, past uh, alleged criminal uh, involvement. Then two, is the fact that um, the entire election itself is marred with irregularities. Now, by virtue of the electoral heart, a petitioner to the tribunal, in this case, the presidential election petition tribunal, may either apply to be so declared the winner of the election or apply for the run. But the major grant for those two prayers, especially the second prayer, which is a rerun, is that he, must, he or she must establish regularities. So for, for the purpose of, the, of getting an understanding of Mr. Peter Obi's uh, uh, petition, mm -hmm. you see that he itemizes and enumerates cases of irregularities. And then he intends to also call software engineers, uh, IT consultants, mm -hmm. to also corroborate uh, the evidence to that. And he has also applied directly for a rerun of the presidential election. If that prayer is granted, it will go down uh, in about a century-old history of Nigeria. Because the first election, I'm talking about the ballot box election, was held in 1922. 1922? Yes. Oh, wow. So it's, uh, it's just entered into a century of that. So that means in the entire 100-year history of elections in Nigeria, uh, we are we are we are going to be having a rerun in the first in the first instance. So that's just um, my my take for now. All right, Barrister Webu, <coughs> do help us understand yeah, well, the petition uh, filed by Atiku Abubakar <laughs> of the PDP. Well, well, the truth is that uh, just like my learned colleagues uh, or my learned friends, uh, we have actually as lawyers who have looked at the petitions which have been. Uh, the prayers of uh, the the petitioners and all uh, the rest, both Peter B and the article, and the two of them seems to actually be saying the same thing. The only difference there is that um, Peter B came uh, third, while article came second. And in his prayers, article is actually asking that the court should declare him winner, or there should be a runoff. And if there is a runoff. It should be between the first person, the first position, and the second position. So the, the, the court will look at it holistically 
vis-à-vis -vis the ingredients and the merits of the matter to decide whether they are, whether they are going to declare uh, Abu Bakr Atiku the winner based on facts he has already adduced uh, in his petition and the, and, and the evidence and all the or to order for a runoff between the first and second, that is between Ahmed Bola Tinubu and the article. But when you're talking of a rerun, which means you have to start the whole exercise at first and for all of them to, to contest again. But the vis a vis, when you look at the issue holistically, you begin to understand that it is only the tribunal that will look at the whole uh, productive value of what they have filed and look at whether it has merit to even make an order at this point in time. Because in, as, as a lawyer, as a person, it is the wise men that are in the tribunal that will look at the whole petition holistically. We might be looking at it from a different angle. And you know something about judicial issues or about law is that when you are filing your process, you always believe that you have made enough evidence and facts to warrant what you are asking for. Why the other person on the other hand? Remember that uh, Abiola Metinubu on his own side is also going to file a reply. So we'll look at it very well. But I assure you that it is going to be a very little uh, puzzle in the tribunal. All right. So all eyes on the judiciary. Exactly. You guys, all eyes on your sector. Yeah. However, there are issues that were thrown up during before, during, and now after the elections. Very well. And some of them were inciting comments mm. that led to killings, injuries, and uh, electoral injustices. Yeah. How should the judiciary come in here mm. to sanitize the system? Thank you so much for that um, question. Uh, by virtue of his constitutional uh, rule, that is the rule the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 has amended, confers on the judiciary. The judiciary cannot make law. It can only uh, decide upon matters brought before it and then interpret law in that instance. Now, we have always argued in this, um, in this country that the need for a dismantling of INEC. INEC is an over, uh, over a combat organization. The sense that it is a, it is a commission that is, in, uh, that is a, a conducting elections, it's the same commission that will be looking for electoral offenders and all that. We have always argued uh, for some of us in the civil society for electoral offenses commission. Because there are people who are making xenophobic and eight species during the elections. And those people are still working free as I speak today. In, uh, in, in, in a sane uh, climb, those persons should be behind bars by now. Mm -hmm. And there should be uh, an enforcement uh, machinery to enforce that. Now, one of major dynamic about, uh, one major dynamic in the electoral 2022 is that it now makes very clear provisions as to the consequences of electoral crimes, because there are really electoral crimes. You see a lot of uh, harassment during the election, uh, a lot of intimidation of voters, suppression of uh, uh, even uh, uh, votes, then even the physical, uh, physical dismantling of ballot boxes, despite the introduction of electronic transmission of results, beavers could not work in some places. We all know the bra about high ref and all that. So we need an independent uh, National Electoral Offenses Commission, which will go after, as INEC is conducting the elections, will just be charged solely with the responsibility of going after these offenders and bringing them to book. Is it but a push towards having this electoral Thank you so commission? much. Yes, there is a push. I, I, I was co-convener of what we call uh, Alliance of Society for the Expansion of um, Electoral and social, uh, Civic Space Access uh, with our late brother who, who, who passed on uh, that time, uh, in, later this year, who are the ones who are calling for uh, the passage of the amendments to the Electoral Act. If you recollect, uh, there are Muhammadu Buhari retired, the president, only signed few of those amendments and left many hanging here. One of those amendments left hanging here 
is the introduction of this electoral offices uh, commission. But being as it may, even despite the limitation of the legal framework, we still have the Nigerian police force, which by virtue of the uh, police act is charged with that responsibility of going after electoral offenders. We saw some um, police officers on duty on the day of election looking the other way on the day of elections. The Inspector General of Police need to act. Can there be a section of the police specially designated to go after electoral uh, offenders? And even those officers who were looking at scans on the day of election should also be subject to disciplinary uh, measures within the Nigerian police. So while we are still asking for for more, our Olivatis should also is asking that those who are responsible now should should take action. All right, Barista, please come in here. How can the judiciary sanitize <laughs> the system in view of all that we saw playing out before, during, and after the elections with regards to the incitements? Well, the, 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 the true position here is that um, we should not shift it to the judiciary. Because first of all, we all know the primary function and role of judiciary is to interpret law. Not even to make laws and not to enforce the laws. Now, offenses are offenses. Whether they are electoral offenses or not, they are called electoral offenses because these are offenses people perpetrate during the time of election. I don't see anything different from it. For example, somebody carrying a machete, carrying a, a, a gun, coming to snatch ballot papers, inciting, putting fear on the people, is, is a crime itself. In fact, for me, it's terrorism. Because if you look at the division of terrorism, it is anything one do to incite fear, to induce the people or the public. It's uh, terrorism. So, but the problem we have here, what, if this situation is working like the police, we won't be talking about all these things. The police is the people that have the responsibility of arresting offenders. Now, the police act provides that the police has every right to arrest somebody when he, when he recently commits, suspects he has committed a crime, about to commit a crime, or likely to commit a crime. It is only when the police arrest people and charge them to court, that the court will now interpret the laws and melt the proper punishment that is saddled for them. So for me, the problem we have here is that the institutions are not working. It's not about the judiciary here. It's about the institutions. It's about the police doing what it's supposed to do. Offense is an offense, whether electoral or not electoral. But the problem, like I said, we have had is that we have not dealt ourselves the truth. That is what I call lack of sincerity of purpose. Because if people have been arrested over years and turned to court and be made to face the law, others will borrow a name from there. It will serve a deterrent to other people. But here you see talks during election after they are arrested on the same day they, they are released. Is it the problem of judiciary? Is the problem of the executive? This mm. is very serious. Mm, mm. The police. He has well, said the police. Well, and we've had uh, many people during this election mm. pointing fingers at the police. Let, let me build a nexus between the police and judiciary so that we have a better construct. Well, it is true that um, the Nigerian police force uh, is, can easily play the excuse that, oh, we are overcharged, we have so many responsibilities and all that. But as of today, it is the law enforcement agency in the country. And then the welfare of the rack and fire of police officers also come into question. Uh, many at times we blame many of these rack and fire police officers for a whole lot of things. We saw the video of a, of a rack and fire police officer that was, was already drunk on the day or on election duty. And some of them were not even harmed. Because by virtue of the electoral act, an armed police officer should be like, uh, I think, 30 meters away from the voting uh, unit. From the actual voting unit. Mm. Now, the, main, the purpose of that is to lay, uh, lay fears of intimidation by voters. But that has not been from experience now, and we are building on experience. Because 
the electoral actual and two was also uh, amended based on the experiences from 1999 to 2. But building on that experience now, we now it's clearer that for us to achieve better elections, we need armed officers to be on duty. Then the welfare of the poor and police officers needs to be upgraded. Because an agreement, as they used to say, is, the, is a tool in the hands of the devil. And when they are not well fed, they are not, they are not well remunerated, they will always uh, play an uh, agency role for some politicians. But now speaking, linking it to the role of judiciary, because that's your question really. Now, we have seen also uh, cases in the past where electoral offenders are apprehended and they are now brought before the courts. What have been the disposition of our courts to electoral offenses? Mm. Now, my brother, my little brother has spoken about offenses and offenses, yes. But electoral offense needs to be given a proper classification of its own, and by actually by the courts. And that's why we have said lawmakers need to hear the court in that regard. But now, our courts too needs to pay uh, closer attention to cases of electoral offenses and where the, 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 there is proof beyond reasonable doubt, because in criminal proceedings, there must be proof beyond reasonable doubt mm -hmm. that this was a particular person committed an offence, our court should, um, should hand down uh, the appropriate um, sentences, so as to serve, serve as deterrence to other uh, electoral offenders. That will now give an inkling of the role, the positive role judiciary can make. Now, let me give you an example. The, we have had experiences in Africa, especially in Kenya. And you know, it, it falls back to your first uh, question. The Kenya Supreme Court upturned the decision, the, the results of a presidential election and delivered judgments in favor of an opponent. Now, in the, if you know the, the tra trajectory of Africa, mm. uh, you know. We have seen tight African dictatorships, and judiciary always play from all from the, the virtual experiences. I always seen the judiciary playing more or less like a Man Friday after this tight uh, dictatorship. So cases like Kenya comes into play. Can the judiciary also stand up and also uh, fulfill the mandate of history? That's the question I'm getting that, there. That is a million dollar question. That's the question I'm getting there. All right, let's look at the consequences well. of <clears throat> inciting people, hmm. inciting people, think comments that could lead to genocide, comments that could lead to killings, as we have seen mm -hmm. in this last election. Very I'll well. start with you, Barisa Huabu. Mm -hmm. What are these? Let's educate ourselves in case people do not know, because it does appear that people do not know. We, we saw some very callous statements made mm. which led to ethnic profiling exactly. in the case of these elections we saw killings we saw oh my goodness i saw some videos i couldn't even watch people brutalized in the course of these elections explain to us some of the consequences of these actions do we do we actually need to ask for the consequences we are all nigerians only that at times we we, we pretend as if we don't know what is happening because he who pays the piper detects the tune. Incitement comments that leads to terror, that leads to killing. What is it? Is it not terrorism? Why is it not the kind of person charged of terrorism today? Is it not the same thing that he was accused of? You see, you see, you see my problem in this country is that it's not like animal uh, farm. Say the, I think this is your major award that said it's animal farm. That uh, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than the other. We should stop, uh, you know, playing to the gallery. By now, I felt that some of these people who saw them, he's on the air, he's on the van, it is not hidden. People are dealing with impunity and walking away that nothing will happen. It's not only here, it's not only in Lagos, almost all across the nation. It's happened in Yoruba land, it's happened in the East, it's happened everywhere. So, but the question here is this, like I go back to, force back to the security agents again. Has the police had the courage, the audacity to exercise their constitutional rights or powers by arresting such people and bringing them to book? Do you know how?
how many people, how many lives that we are lost because of some of these inciting comments all over the nation, what are we saying? So we already know the, 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 the implications of what this is and the chaos and the dangers it's posed to the public. But unfortunately, the high and mighty will always shed their own people. So what are we saying? Until we stand out and tell ourselves the truth. Julius Mianyi of Tanzania once said something. He said, until we return back to the truth, we must persist and continue in error. So if we are ready to survey or to sanitize this country, we must start with us. Nobody is a sacred cow. As far as I'm concerned, that is the impunity that is keeping Nigeria where we are today. No matter who all it is, the security agents must do the needful. We all watch. We are security agents. We are at the background. When some of these things have been uh, happened, not only in Lagos State, it happened in somewhere in the east. It happened in somewhere, somewhere in Kujia. All the rest. What has happened? Has there been any news that someone has been apprehended or arrested up to today? So what are we saying? Is he everything you talk about judiciary? Is it not only when you apprehend somebody and bring him to court that judiciary will look into the matter? Or is, is, the, is the chief just going to arrest these people? Let's be realistic for once and tell Nigerians the truth okay, and do right. the needful. Okay, let Aya okay, come in here. Please let me come in. Um, the first thing, the uh, question is that, what are the consequences? Now, we are going to see an upsurge of um, terrorism. Now, if you look at it, the, especially in Lagos State, the anti-Igbo uh, uh, xenophobia, yes. that's where I put it. Yes. Uh, it's going to have a lot of vibrations. If you look at it, uh, before the elections, we saw uh, a rise, first of all, you know, do our nation agitation in the southwest. And then, of course, the long-standing Biafra agitation with a concomitant rural guerrilla uh, warfare. In fact, the real reason why uh, why we saw some votes for a person like um, one of the leading presidential candidates was because of that this is this is like a a peaceful road to an igbo presidency quote and unquote mm. now with what we have seen in lagos we have not yet seen the kind of terrorism we are seeing in the northeast in lagos city it is now very very possible because the Bible says, it was the Bible that said, you can't sow wind and then not expect to reap wind. wind. Then two, is that we are also going to see a level of increase in uh, northeast banditry. Because if you look at it, the weaponization of um, ethnic profiling mm. and identity politics that is being employed now uh, is going to have a lot of vibrating consequences. And the road to, the road to hell, as it used to say, is always paved with good intentions. If the incoming presidency is really mindful of national unity, it should call his uh, media haste to order. Mm -hmm. Who are going tweet after tweet, even, even after being cautioned by colleagues that this is this is this is barbaric to say the least to blackmail a whole section of the country upon the altar of what or just altar of obtaining power. Uh, which is just a, 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 a transcend a, a transcend thing. Now, uh, we are we are we are seeing the nineteen sixties recycling back in motion. It is a philosopher that said history repeats itself first of all as a tragedy, then subsequently as a farce. If you go and watch all the events of nineteen sixty six and today, you it's as if you are living the same time. In nineteen sixty six, before of us saw a coup. In January 1966, in which the other coup was found to be a coup by some Igbo officers. But it was not, it was not. In fact, the leader of that coup, his name is Kaduna, he speaks Aousa more than Igbo. In fact, the late uh, Chief Fulambi Azukwe was regarded to have been born in Zungeru and speaks Aousa, according to Chief Awolowo, in his in a particular book, so speaks Aouka more than the Kano donkey. So, and he's a diploma, and he speaks Yoruba also fluently. Now, what we need in this country is that we need to shed all forms of ethnic profiling and identity politics and all these, uh, uh, the, all the forces employing those kind of uh, identity politics in this country needs to be apprehended and their spokespersons uh, 
brought to book. You know, I'm surprised really that I haven't heard from Al Haji Lai Mohammed, Very well. who was speaking so gallantly against hate speech. Well. I would have thought that by now, Al Haji, except if the, <laughs> such speeches or reactions or responses from him escaped me. I haven't seen any. Have you seen any? I've not seen any. I, and I, I want to use the opportunity to also call the person of Bayo Nonuga mm -hmm. to order. This live TV, we, this country cannot be eroded into disaster. This is a spokesperson of a particular presidential candidate and uh, by, by all categorization, a presidential, uh, a president-elect who went on Twitter to make an egophobic comment. I even cautioned by uh, a, a elaborated uh, Femi Professor Keyamu. Despite that, that cautioning, by Professor Kiyamu, a second tweet. A second. To now had uh, an uh, uh, injury, I mean, sort of injury, a third tweet. It's not caught for. It's now, not caught for. Now, the, the, another thing is, you, you, like, as you said, Igbophobic mm, utterances. Comments, exactly. Why the Igbos? Because it's not only Labour Party candidate who is the, an Igbo man that is kicking against the let result let me, let me you. Of, of this, okay. you know, uh, uh, speaking against Bola Ahmed Tinubu's uh, well. uh, uh, declaration, well. you have Atiku Abubakar, who is from the north. Mm. Yet, this whole hate Ibophobia. speech yes, exactly. is centered and attached to the Igbos. Thank you so Why much. that? Now, thank you so much. I, will, I want to take you across history. Mm. Now, as I've told you, this is the 1960s rolling back in motion. You need to understand the social phenomenon that the Igbos constitutes in this part of the world. Now, by, their, by virtue of their very eclectic mobility and entrepreneurial ingenuity, they constitute a very huge, a very serious uh, economic uh, force in any part of Africa. Now, if you now look at the events that led up to Biafra, you will understand that the Biafra question is just a ghost that has not been buried. Now, if you look at it, with, especially with the, uh, the emergence of uh, IPOP in the last, let's say, the last five years, it also shows you that years of marginalization, years of segreg segregation has put the Biafra question more and more in, 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 on the table. And the biggest question facing the Nigerian nation today is nothing but the Biafra question. And that is why we saw all the energy now driving around uh, the, the Igbophobia. Because, as I've told you, history is peace itself, first as a tragedy, as a country, as a first. We need to accept the fact that we as Africans hmm. share a common identity. In fact, a linguistics professor has linked the etymology, that is the root of words, of the Igbo people with the Yoruba people. Interesting. Yes. I, I studied in Obafe uh, University. There's a whole book, I have it in my library, that gives, gave what we call a comparative etymology of the root of words of the Yoruba people and the Igbo people. So what are people talking about? It's only those who have not read well enough that they don't understand that in the real sense, we have a common a common link. Mm -hmm. Now, if you now go further to archaeology, to demolish the arguments completely, and anthropology, the oldest Homo sapien, that is our, our breed now, huh, was from Ethiopia. And from our account of history, both the eastern dispersal of that Homo, Homo, Homo sapien and western dispersal is still within Africa. Mm -hmm. And we, have, we are arguably the oldest Homo sapiens around. So, we have a common bond. And we have a nation to build. We cannot allow identity politicians to, to, to rewrite history at this point in time. This country is now at the brink. And we must, we must rescue it from the brink by destroying all these narratives that is meant to take us to, 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 to Rwanda. We cannot, at this time, go to Mogadishu. All right. Mm. Uh, Barrister Uhuebu. <laughs> Still taking a look at this ethnic card played by the desperate politicians who I believe tried to use it as a psychological warfare mm. during this election. Mm. 
why do you think they have targeted Ndibo more when you also have Al Haji Atuka Abubakar kicking against the outcome of the elections, which threw up Bola Ahmed Tinubu as president elect? Barisa, do we still have you? Yes, we have you. Well, the truth is that I believe the that question, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah, hear Yeah, I, I believe that question should, that question should actually be brought to the people who are perpetuating this. Because actually, you now ask yourself a question. Uh, what, is, what are we actually passing in Nigeria? What did the constitution provide for? Did the constitution provide for citizenship or indigenous? And it is only during election that people remember they are Yoruba, Aosa, or Igbo. Mm. But after election, the voting becomes the same. In 2015, I made a categorical statement on air. I said poverty. Okay, uh, Barista. But no more tribe, religion, or is what we are experiencing. I said in 2015, that poverty does not know age, religion, tribe, or, or whatever you can call it. And today, everybody is affected. Now, when you, when you look at the whole thing, Igbo, 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 you begin to ask yourself a question. Why the Igbos? Are they, okay, let me take an example. If there is a football match hmm. that in Nigeria is taking part, you discover that everybody becomes the same. Hmm. Whether Aosa, Igbo, or Yoruba, mm. it is Nigerian. Mm. And can I take you back <coughs> using football as an example? So, the golden team that won the gold medal for the first time for Nigeria, if you look at it politically, because of what we were discussing, you discover that 95% of them are Igbos. Did anybody bother? They were interested about bringing the gold. If you look at it holistically, now when it comes to politics or power sharing, they remember that this person is an evil man. This person is Yoruba and this person is Aosa. If you look at the history, in the first place, like my brother said, during the time of the, our, 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 our fathers, that the rulers of this nation, they never considered the issue of evil Yoruba or Aosa and all the rest. But it is a tool that the selfish politicians today are using to affect the psyche of the citizens and especially the youth. And that is why you see some of these things happening. Whether you like it or not, God has blessed every region with a particular thing or blessing. The Igbos, for one reason or the other, are the evil room of our e economy in this place. Not only in Nigeria, all over the world. Mm. All right. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh. In fact, eh, there's a saying that say that the man. There's a saying. There's a saying that if you go anywhere in the world, if you do not see an evil man, you should pack up from that place. Mm -hmm. And that is still goes. So and we have been neighbors. We are all over the country, we're all over the nation. Meeting as well, trying to make sure that the country moves on. If we after this election now and the president is warning and everything goes down well, you see that nobody will remember that he's, he's an evil man again. If you are doing this, why would you allow a Yubo man to buy a land in Lagos and build a skyscraper? Why would you allow a Yubo man to buy a land in Samon Gary or in Kaduna or India to build a skyscraper? Why not say go to your place and develop that place? We are deceiving ourselves. And it is that time we should tell ourselves the truth and say no to these politicians that want to use ethnicity to divide us. We should say no to it. All right. Well, you, you've you've made some very strong comments. Exactly. The ghost of the Biafra. Mm. All right. Uh, you know, uh, Ibophobia. Mm. Do you see us moving forward mm. without this being dealt with as it should be? And how should it be dealt with as it should be? Talking about Ibophobia and the ghost of Biafra. Thank you so much for that uh, question. What are, ghost, uh, what are we going to be saying? So that we quickly paint the scenario that's going to happen mm -hmm. is that we're going to see more and more uh, young and old Igbo people being driven more and more into the arms of um, 
armed struggle for Biafra. Now, <clears throat> we are also going to see in the coming period uh, with this um, xenophobic um, narrative, if it develops this way, we are going to see the possibility of a second civil war. Hmm. Yes. In, I, we, I wrote a pre-election analysis in which I was saying that we can even see possibly armed clashes between northern bandits and um, um, guerrillas fighting for Biafra in the east. But I never, in that analysis, I never knew that Lagos, a cosmopolitan city, will not be the theater for that war. What I'm not going to be seeing is that we're going to be seeing more uh, uh, terrorist guerrillas fighting for a Biafra nation in Lagos. Because that is the kind of scary uh, situation they are trying to build. If they, they don't understand that they are playing with fire. We are hearing about terrorist attacks in uh, Maduguri. Maduguri is looking very far. Maduguri will soon be in Oshodi. Hmm. We'll soon be in Insolo. We'll soon be in Lekki if we continue with this xenophobic uh, uh, xenophobia. Now, the solution to that, because we are now also not left without hope, is that this um, this kind of divisive uh, ethnic jingoism we only even further unite people when it comes to the question of economy and class you may Please wonder, explain how uh, th thank you so much now if you look at this uh, this stomach does not know whether it's an Igbo Money. stomach <laughs> or something this naira crisis now mm -hmm. does it not affect all layers of society the Nigerian Labour Congress has declared the sit at home action from next week, uh, Wednesday. Those kind of struggles are going to unite people across the color and um, ethnic bar. We are, going to go, go, we are going to be seeing more united class struggles in the coming period. So it's, it's going to have a, 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 the, the dice they are playing, it's going to fall back on them. And this is a lot of warning okay. to Marissa. these uh, oppressors yeah. who think they can divide us. With those things, we, uh, the people should stand united in their day-to-day -day survival struggles. The question of how to get cash, the question of how to get money, how to get food on the table mm -hmm. is going to unite us in the coming period. And not All right, Barisa Huebo, social capital, a shared sense of national <coughs> belonging, is quite critical because these comments, which were made, have already begun to burn bridges, whether we like it or not. Hatred. Bridges are being burned. How do we create social capital? How do we begin to rebuild that sense of oneness as we move forward? Well, it's just, that, just like my friend said, unfortunately, this is where we are today. Um, in fact, I'm beginning to see another subconsciousness uh, on the region of the Indus because uh, a typical Indo man is a very free person. He would like to be in a place, organize that place, and enjoy that place, and bring in good things to develop that place. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, with what has happened, an evil man will begin to think twice now, because we never believed that in this jet age, that such thing will be happening. So for me, I only feel that if we have a responsive government, they should, at this point in time, come out openly. There's nothing wrong in the government or even the president-elect or whoever that is going to take over to make a public apology to all Nigerians and especially the Igbos and say that we are sorry or that he is sorry that it could have been done out of ignorance that we are all one. Except you give people sense of belonging. This problem will continue to degenerate, whether you like it or not. No matter how you try to sweep it under the carpet, it will keep on rising. Remember also that children are involved. Most, most of our children have seen all these things that are happening and all the rest. In fact, as I speak to you, I don't know whether you have seen on social media so many Nigerians that live in diaspora that have started openly fearing their Nigerian passports that they do not believe in this country again. 
That is as a result of the fallout of what has happened. And you now ask yourself a question. Ordinary election that somebody can only be there for four years, at most eight years. Does this call for us to destroy this country in total? And we are keeping quiet. There are people who engineered all these things. And that's why I am talking about the security agents. The city uh, of various states, they are there. The IG of police is there. The director of DSS is there. The EMCC is there. Name them all the security apparatus. And nothing has happened. None of these people have been called for questions. It is only when Nigerians or when the woman see that issues are being handled that they will not say yes, we believe in this nation. If not, with what has happened, I have to tell you the truth. No evil man, especially the ones that go out every day to fight for their daily bread, that will take this country seriously again. So the best thing at this point now is a public apology, especially to the evil ones. Let us put it that way and let us say, well, it was done out of ignorance. It was never my intention. I never instructed anybody to do X, Y, Z. If not, my sister, my brother, Nigeria uh, is sitting on a bed of gunpowder. We must all come together and tell ourselves the truth. Maybe you use the National Orientation Agency to talk to people. You ask the question that why is it that Leah Mohammed has not said anything up to now about her speech? These are people that were, were against her speech and all the rest. So, all these things that happened this way, they are not regarded as her speech or what. We must. Be careful until I've said the truth. Yeah, someone has uh, canvassed for a referendum. Do okay. you share that view? Yeah, on the question of referendum, I share the view of um, referendum uh, in the sense that um, referendum affords us the democratic opportunity to determine whether we want to coexist mm -hmm. as a country or otherwise. But the real reality is that <clears throat> these elections is in itself a referendum on the continuous coexistence of Nigeria. And the question that you ask the question you ask me is that how? How does it also mm -hmm, conduct a referendum? <laughs> Don't forget that just less than a year ago, one of the, the biggest questions in this country was the question of Odua nation. Have you forgotten? There was a time of the there was a jingoism that Odua nation, the Odua Republic and, and the Egoism and mm. everything. Why are all those uh, uh, drum beats disappeared. They have only disappeared on the basis of the fact that this same ruling elite, very bankrupt ruling elite in this part of the world, whip up this jingoism for their own interest. And when they have not positioned themselves and capture power, they forget and bury those jingoism. Now, we now see them employing the bophobia uh, narrative. Mm -hmm. We must not fall for it. We must not fall for it. Now, ultimately, it is only when we, we the of the ninety nine percent in this country, because according to the, the World Bank, yes, according to the World Bank, uh, only about less than one percent of Nigeria, of Nigerian population, which are the political elite, really, really, uh, take the the, the fact of of the common wealth of this country. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Nigeria is one of the biggest oil producers in countries in the world, mm -hmm. about eighteen Seven. trillion dollars, petro dollars is is coming out of this country. Now, according to us Farm International, just five Nigerians can settle about 78% of poverty. These are the, this class, background ruling elite, is the real elite we need to displace in this country. Within a democratic and egalitarian uh, uh, scenario, we can now have a referendum in which we will determine whether we want to have an independent Victoria Island. Mm. The Republic of Victoria Island. Do you know that Catalonia, the Republic of Catalonia in Spain, is smaller than this entire lake city? And it's an independent republic. They have the right to self-determination. So ultimately, what we need to, the ruling elites we need to deal with is the 1% ruling elites. And we have encouragement from all over Africa. As we, as, as we speak today, mm. South Africa is in, is in, a, is in a big uprising. Uh, 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 well, this uh, Kenya is also in a big uprising. Mm -hmm. The whole of Africa is on their feet, 
and Nigeria as the second, as one of the, the biggest popular, the biggest black nation, needs to also stand up for the speech, united against oppression well, thank and you against so education. Much. Thank mm. you so much. We're about to round up, but before we say goodbye, Barrister, who would just yes or no? Do you buy the idea of referendum? Yeah, then we have what we need at this point in time. All right, thank you so much. Well, we've been taking a look at post-elections litigation and vital uh, role of the judiciary as we move forward in this country. And I've had Barrister Justice Uhuebu, human rights lawyer and former vice presidential candidate of the NAC party, uh, he ran in 2019 as my guest. I also have Barrister Ayo Ademiluyi, a legal practitioner, both of you it's gentlemen, I'll, you know, thank it's you so it's much for your time. Thank you. It is my pleasure. It's a pleasure. I am Maureen Menongwe Thanks for watching.